There are trains in the middle of nowhere, a line on the horizon. Even deep in the Sahara, there is a world of silence and sometimes agitation. Hello and welcome to Mauritania. I'm in the Sahara, a setting that is unique in the world, to view the show of dunes and infinity. My journey will take me from the Sahara Desert, the largest in the world, to Nouadhibou on the Atlantic coast by train, on the longest iron ore train in the world. There's sand almost everywhere, except for by the station. Come on, let's go. The Sahara is also a matter for the rails. In Mauritania, the ocean of sand is split by the railroad tracks. The iron ore train is a source of life for the whole country, composed of 90% desert and became independent since 1960. A scrap metal monster hiding another, smaller tourist train for the desert travelers. Hello, Bula. Hello, Olivier. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. To How's it guy? going? You're a man of the desert. Yes. It's going to be nice to discover your country with you. Sure, we'll start on the train, and then we'll see something else. Great. We're not going to do anything without drinking a welcome cup of tea first, in Mauritania's tradition. The famous traditional tea. It is the custom, my friend. We have to take off our shoes even in the train in Mauritania? Yes, to respect the custom. Bula, I think I'm going to drink a lot of tea in Mauritania, right? Yes, like everybody who lives here. What are you doing? Why, why, why do you have to stir the tea? To make foam? Yes, it's for foaming and to make it look good. Only for aesthetics? Only aesthetics, my friend. But it's also the way of tea. There's a big difference. There's no comparison. For every person you love and care for, wouldn't serve tea without foam. So it means you're starting to care about me now? Yes, you're my friend. <laughs> Well, here we go. Between two giant convoys of iron ore on the same track, the desert train transports about 15 hikers and adventure travel enthusiasts. They finally discover this country which was neglected for about 10 years because of instability and terrorism. That is to say, for 135 kilometers, we have underground basins that this water train supplies. Sid Ahmed, you're the guide of this desert train. Nice to meet you. There are travelers and walkers with us. Is it new and important, the return of the desert train? A secure country is a rich country. It's neither the business, numbers, fish, gold, nor diamonds. It's safety first, the wealth of the country. And that's the case here today in Mauritania. Here is the proof. There are tourists on the desert train. It didn't run for 12 years. And this year, Hamdullah Shukrulu, the train is running in this desert. I've been waiting for this for 12 years. Shukran, thank you very much. Waiting for the ore train, my guide Bulla is taking me to the desert by other means of transport. Just as safe and consistent. It's going to be a bumpy ride. All aboard! Oh, here we go! It's pretty good up here. Yalla! So you're coming with me, Bulla, huh? Yeah, relax, calm down. With you, I'm relaxed. Drunk in freedom, the camel drivers in their sand principality perpetuate the art of the caravan.
we arrive in a singular oasis, Tenashir, where only the wives stay waiting for their husbands who go to work in the iron or salt mines. What are these stories these women are telling in their singing? It's about a woman who's missing her husband. He's been away for a couple of months, and she really wants him back home. All right, it's a love song then. Yes. Ah, there you go. Thank you, my friend. Your husband went to work outside the oasis. Yes. And he'll be back in a few days? And then it'll be party time again then. <laughs> She's telling you that you have reminded her of her husband. She is saying that the night he'll be back, there's going to be a special party for him, so all the women will gather, and she's going to do her braid and her henna. She's going to make herself beautiful for her husband, despite her age. In Tenashir, the women fight against abandonment, cultivating plots of land to the edge of the oasis. They also welcome desert walkers when they adventure out here. It's a lovely little place. A good night. Except when there's sand everywhere, of course. <laughs> Hello, Bula. Hello, Olivier. Did you sleep well? I slept very well. And you? Yes. So now I'm going to show you the oasis and the beautiful dunes of Tenashere. Okay. These dunes are very beautiful. I'll follow you. Let's go. In the forgotten oasis, the women are not only fighting loneliness, but also the sand silting. The dunes are great moving walls, and sand waves overwhelm everything, even souls. Well, this oasis has to be earned. It's beautiful. Yes, it has to be earned. But unfortunately, as you can see, this oasis risks disappearance in a few years. Threatened by the dunes and sand silting. Exactly. So every year the desert is expanding a little bit more. Yes, apparently the desert is expanding by five meters a year. There are walls including a higher one. Is there anything we can do about that sand silting? People living here have tried every means at their disposal to stop the dunes from advancing, but to no avail. All the date palms we can see all over there aren't enough to stop the expansion of the desert? No, they aren't enough. This tree in front of us is called the Prosopis. Okay. It does stop the advance of the dunes, but also draws water 150 meters below the surface. It's a risk to the phreatic table. I think that this oasis has only a few years left. And people here don't want to leave? No, they don't. They want to stay here in Tenashir. The sandstorms lift all the dirt up and forces humility. Humans can only bow to these gigantic hourglasses. A silence of a thousand silences, wrote saint exupéry I'm glad to see the desert with you, or your desert. It is a great pleasure for me to see you discovering this beautiful Mauritanian desert that I love. And discovering the oasis. Absolutely. Mauritania is a big country, twice the size of France. How many people still live in the desert? The surface area of Mauritania is 1,030,700 square kilometers. It's twice the size of France and four times the size of Germany, but its population hasn't yet reached 4 million inhabitants, and 10% of this 
are nomadic, which means that 400,000 people are now living in this huge desert. Yes, and surviving. We live off date palms, farming, and other businesses, of course. In one of these remote towns, Philippe, a French humanitarian, takes care of a small school, the Desert Madrasa, the École des Sables, supports schooling in the region. So now we're going to see the little school. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you? Are you all right, children? Hello. Okay. Uh, here are some pencils so children can write thank you cards to Philippe and his friends at the association. Uh -huh. And notebooks. Here you go. Here you go. You already got one. Uh, no? <laughs> the children seem very happy that we're giving them notebooks and pens. Yes, they're very happy, even if they don't quite express it out of modesty and reserve, because it's the basis of education, especially for young girls. But there's one thing that never fails. Their eyes. They're shining with joy. Philippe, I feel you are very moved when you speak about your humanitarian work here. You were very attracted to this country. Does that mean you're committed now? You're involved? Yes, I am. I do think that we have some kind of responsibility. As Europeans, we are wealthier, so we have facilities that they can't even imagine here. You're passionate about this? Oh yes, it's my every day. Mauritania is a country of four million inhabitants. The majority of the population is less than 25 years old, so there are huge needs for education, I imagine. Yes, there's a huge need for education, especially since we're starting from a very low base. Culturally, these are populations of farmers who are now more semi-nomadic than nomadic, but they've come back to fit in, settle in on the land of their ancestors, where often a great, great, great grandfather is buried. And what makes us have a connection to the points of settlement of the populations? At the moment, several families are regrouping, and where there are school-aged children, they naturally are asking to have a school, which they often build themselves. It's just makeshift, but it's not bad to use that word because they don't have the means. The difficulty beyond that from a national aspect, uh, is to find enough teachers to hold that many positions. Hence the government's policy to seek to group together, to mutualize. This is our base, pooling resources so that as many people as possible can use it in one place. In this École de Sable built by the association, children come from very far away thanks to an all-terrain and open-air school pickup. At the end of the dunes, the desert train resumes its course. Railroad, sand road. The Saharan train also likes to take its time. Hello, Thierry. Hello. I know you are passionate about Mauritania, but also about art, so I come and sit with you. Nice to meet nice you. To meet you. <laughs> so you travel and you paint Mauritanian landscapes? Yes, I sketch. Wadis and so on. Yeah. Here are the tickets. This was our first camp last night in the village of Azugi. So here it is this morning. It's not finished. It's Tenzag's Pass, actually. We've come off the shelter of Adra, and we went down to take the road to Tum. 
You seem to know this country very well, don't you? It's a country I've known since my early childhood. Oh, so you've actually lived here? I've lived here since 1963. My father worked on Mifirma at the time. It is the working part of the train. He and his colleagues were detached from the SNCF. OK, so he was involved in the construction of the railway. Yes, he was. It started in 1962, in fact, when the line was created. OK, so your dad actually built the line? He participated incrementally to the construction site. Uh, how fast did it go then? It was pretty fast, since it was several kilometres a day. Per day, that's yes, a that's a lot. It's a line that's 650 kilometres long, which starts from the seashore, where all the materials were arriving, and goes to Zurat, where there is iron ore mining. In any case, you clearly carry Mauritania in your heart. I mean, you love this country. That's my second home, yes. The desert train takes me to Zuarate, the city of the iron mine. This is the city of Mauritania's treasure chest, its treasure, which is well guarded. The scenery changes abruptly, from gold to fire. Another world awaits me beyond the dunes. The iron mine of Zuarate. Santa Exupere spotted it flying over the Mores desert in 1929 during the time of the airpost. A Dantean universe crisscrossed by steel dinosaurs, nibbling at its flanks day and night with brave truckers. Behind it is 200 tons. 200 tons? 200 tons of ore. We'd better check the brakes before we go down. Yes, of course. The company is clear to ensure that safety is the priority of all priorities. And is it a job that is passed down from father to son here? For some of us, yes. For you? Yes. And we are very happy to work in this company, despite the fatigue and all that. But this is a sacrifice for our country, of course. Yeah, I do feel that there is a certain pride in you and the other employees when it comes to the mining company. We're very happy. It gives us strength. It's our company. The iron ore is conveyed to the plane and then to the big ore train. Never before has the railroad been so worthy of its name. Hello. Can we go up? Okay. So you're going to Nuadibu? Yes. Okay. How are you? Can I come with you? Of course. Excellent. Thank you very much. Is it this way? Finally, here it is, the legendary Sahara train, a beast. The 16,000-ton monster shakes the sand around it and runs like a giant reptile through the vastness and mystery of the land. The desert, home of the wind and caravans made of steel in waves of ever-changing sand. Amazing to see this welcoming tea ceremony in all weathers and even at full speed. There's a nice view here from the train. Very nice view. This train, which is the, the, the ore train, is a very big train. It's a really, really big train. Still the longest train in the world? Yes. Sometimes it's more than a mile long. And you, as the operation controller, you make this trip what, very often? Very often, yes. You're in charge of what's happening on the railroad tracks. There are camels, aren't there? Oh, yeah, we control everything. Sometimes camels come and cross the track, and sometimes the train crushes them. And what's wrong with the railroad tracks? When there's the meeting of trains, that's a problem. You have to be careful when you pass each other. When we meet, yes. Two kilometers on one side, two kilometers on the other side. Each train, when they see each other, has to stop and doesn't leave until the other train crossing has gone. Hassan, we're, we're breaking now. Why? Yes, we'll be taking the 30-mile-an-hour turnaround. Yeah? 
for braking. All right. We're going to pass the seven train. Ah, we passed the train going the other way. Yes, exactly. It's an empty train coming from Nuadibu, and apparently it's going to be a very long one. Our train is almost a mile long, and I think this is almost the same length. We'll be careful. We take this little break and have opportunity to go see the passengers right at the end of the train, but it's almost a mile walk. Then it may be... maybe it's an exaggeration. Shall I try to get on that little train? Go on, That's right. See you soon. Hello. I'll try to find some passengers. Yes, go for it. Yes, it's there. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the ride. I've gained two kilometers. Hello. How are you? Will you accept me on board your carriage? Can I come up? I can't see anything now. <laughs> you have to do it 20 times to learn how. <laughs> you have to be professional, huh? <laughs> I hope I can breathe a little with this. Thank you for accepting me. So I don't have a train ticket, is that okay? No problem. It's free. <laughs> we don't pay. It is. <laughs> Well, now it's going to be cold, so we have to cover up and also protect ourselves from dust. And what do you do for a living? We're looking for gold. Looking for gold? Yes. Is it hard to travel on the train when it's cold at night and, well, with the dust? Yes, there's dust, it's cold, there's a lot of inconveniences, but it's okay. Are you going to be okay? Yes. Hassan tells me about his quest for nuggets in the desert, not far from the railroad tracks. He sometimes only brings back small treasures, but he and his friends keep the secret and hope one day to make a fortune. There's dust in your eyes, huh? I don't know how you bear it. To go on like this for hours. And we're covered in soot. Yes, it's hot. Well, I'm going to put some ski goggles on soon, right? <laughs> They're nice. You're going all the way? Yes. What's your job? I'm a taxi driver. Driver too? Yes. A truck? No, a taxi. Okay, a taxi in the desert. Yes. Taxi, new shot, transport. Oh yes, everywhere. Yes, everywhere. <laughs> It's cold. Is it working? Ah, yes, there's fire. It's really what we call resourcefulness. A gas stove on the wagon. We'll have tea for sure. Perfumed by iron ore. <laughs> Yes. Careful, the blanket's going to catch fire. Ah, thank you. Is that, that for me? Thank you. Shukran. Wherever we are, there's tea and hospitality. I'm very touched by the attitude of Mauritanians, wherever they are, in the desert, in the villages, or on the world's longest iron ore train. And surely, one of the nicest trains. <laughs> it's for you. You like it? The skip and the beast. On the railroad trailer, 
The new nomads prepare their shelter with lungs infested with iron particles. A camel ride under the benevolent lights of the Sahara Desert and its lost kingdoms. A prayer on the metal frames and under the moon. Here, the Milky Way and the railroad go so well together. I'm going to sleep now. Good night. I can't see anything anyway. Ugh. Ugh. We're three under the blanket. We'll keep warm. Good night. I get off here. Well, bon voyage. I was delighted to share these moments with all of you. <laughs> Bye, city. Bye. Bye. Bon voyage, sir. See you soon. Bye. Here, here, here! Are those sardines? Yes, they are. How much does it cost? How much? It's 400 for both. 400 for both? Oh, please don't. Really, you don't have to. I pay them. Thank you very much. I'm getting up onto the only passenger car which is full and where every half square meter is occupied. There's no space. There's no free space. It's it's full. Sorry. Is there space for me here? No? There's just a little bit of space. All right. Good evening. Can I sit here? I'll try not to kick the pans. <laughs> it's sport. You are all going to Nuadibu? Yes, yes. Okay, my, my name is Olivier, and you are? My name is Ali. Ali? Well, it's a little warmer than on the iron ore wagon. You can take this off. There's no problem. I see that everyone's well equipped here. Yes, everyone is well equipped. We can eat and drink. We can eat. We can have fun. We can... The only problem is there's not much space, right? Yes, right. And we're still working it out. Yes, we'll work it out among ourselves. You live in Nuadibu by the sea? Yes, I live in Nuadibu. At Ran Nuadibu with the famous white headland yes, at the end? Yes, I know the white headland. Oh, what are you doing over there? I do technical studies. Uh, technical studies? And yes. what will be your job afterwards? In auto mechanics. With this knowledge, you're sure to find work in Mauritania, no? You know, Mauritania is a country where it's quite hard to get your degree and find a job that suits you. It's very difficult. Yes. You're about to get your mechanics diploma. Do you have hope in Mauritania? Yes, yes. For tomorrow, for the future of the country? Yes, yes, I have a lot of hope for the new generation. Mm. I have great hope. This generation has the spirit to change, to build the new Mauritania. Tell me, Ali, on the train, is it chance for Mauritanians to meet, to talk to each other? To meet and talk to each other, yes. Discuss and exchange positive ideas. Ideas that can also contribute in the future. Slow and steady wins the race. I think that it's going to be okay, inshallah. Those are hopeful words, and that's good. Yes. No one will come and change Mauritania. Only us, the next generation. There is no dining car here. Uh, can I eat with you? Yes. I'll pay for my meal. Of course. Huh? No problem. The problem when you take the iron ore train is after that, we're a little dirty. Yes, there's a lot of dust there. You see that? Yes. 
Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's time to taste it. Mohamed's dish. Abdul Ali's dish. It's delicious. Very, very good. The beast continues its race throughout the night with its 16,000 tons of cargo and hope in the hope. A little nap before the next stopover. In the crush, passengers sleep where they can, sometimes standing up. Oh, it's deserted. A train station finally, or rather a few households, in the middle of nowhere. It was a short night. It's true that the Sandman can't make a fortune in the desert. I am leaving the Temamichet, the life base, the iron ore society base. Look, it's written right there. It's a camp in the middle of the desert. It's good to be rested and above all in a clean place. I'm gonna visit this little desert station and apparently there aren't many people. An unlikely village, which sprang from the sands and lives only thanks to the railroad. The dunes and walls combine. Here, the desert remains king and knows how to take back all its rights. Ah, why does it feel like we're in a small village on the railway? Uh, look, the sleepers are recovered enough for constructing buildings, gutters and also to fight against the silting. Resourcefulness. A landscape of eternity where the sand dissolves time and erases the tracks. Like the first city of Chinguedi, a city that's been mythical for centuries, buried in the wind. In front of us, can we see Chinggeti? In front of us. On the right is the Chinggeti of 1917. And on the left is the Chinggeti of 1264. From 1917? 1917. The city that was moved in the time of the French? Yes. Why? Because the sand finally forced the city to evacuate? The sand is gaining ground, so people are expelled by it. Okay. And it's all because of that strong east wind that blows behind us? It's all because of this prevailing wind from the east. If you don't mind my saying so, we're stepping on houses that have been completely covered with sand. So we're really stepping on houses. And it's going to be the case for the second and also the third Chinggeti. You stay optimistic on the fate of the desert cities and oases. I'll stay optimistic until the day I die, especially for this city, which is a holy city for us, the seventh holy city of Islam. So we're going to fight to save this holy city. The merchants and scholars who stopped at this oasis during the pilgrimages left one of the great treasures of the desert here, a library of sands. There's also this, the trail of ancient caravans. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. 
Olivier, we are in one of the old libraries of Chinggeti, Habert's library. All right. And here is the curator, Mr. Abdullah, one of this family's sons. Okay. Uh, you, you have to wear gloves? I can't wait to see this. From the 13th century. Unbelievable. Look at these colors. Is this a religious manuscript? It's a theology manuscript. Was it written in, in Chigeti or was it brought here by the oasis inhabitants? It was brought back through the Mecca paths. In this oasis of books, works of poetry, Arabic grammar, geometry, astrology, and even a manual by the great Persian scholar Avicenna, signed by his own hand. I, I'm amazed. You have centuries and centuries of history preserved here in this small library sheltered from the wind and the dust. With Bula, we decide to camp on the caravan trail, which gets closer to the iron convoy. Bula, who's regaining his nomadic instincts, finds a perfect place between the dunes of great loneliness. Here we are. Yes, we're going to make our shelter here. We'll set up our tent, sheltered from the wind. We're safe here. And we're protected by the dune in front of us. Yes. The sun goes down quickly here in the desert and it's going to get cold. Yes. So let's hurry up and oh, get yes. the tent. Come on. We have let's everything go. we need. We have sleeping bags, mattresses, everything we need. Hey, Bula, my master of the desert tells me I must set up the tent well, because if I don't, we might get a little surprise in the early morning with the night wind. It's okay now. So tonight I'm going to taste camel. Has it got a strong taste? No, no, not strong. It's tender. Yes, but a little tasty. Of course. Everything we do has taste. You won't regret coming to Mauritania. I already don't regret it at all. And I feel like you're living through it again yeah, when right. you're only far away from the village, far away from the city. You're almost another bulla. Now I'm getting my strength back, my friend. I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad you came to bring me back to the desert. I'm thrilled too. So am I. We have to dress warmly tonight. Yes, we have to. Let's taste this camel meat. Dromedary meat, to be accurate. Here is salt, my friend, if you're short of it. Mm. Just right. All right. Enjoy. Thank you. The meat is tender. It's very tasty and a little strong. Huh. It's really delicious. Thank you for this invitation to the desert. Oh, you're welcome, sir. Yes. Allez. 
There we go. Getting ready for the night. We're in the sleeping bags. If you're cold, you can go sleep into the tent. Yes, absolutely. Oh, boy, look at this show. Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable to see all those stars. <laughs> wow. Good night, Bula. Good night. See you tomorrow. The next day, I'm joining a small convoy that's eagerly waiting, a vital artery in the desert. The water train, which is also a mobile shop. Tens of cubic meters at each stage, for free, to help the nomads in their great transhumance. Hello. Hello. You're the tanker manager? Does the water go here? Yes. It's coming along nicely. There's a hell of a flow. And the water arrives in this well, lost in the depths of the desert, but which the farmers and animals know well, and which is refueled every week by this train of life and its great tank cars. Mr. Moussa, are you the conductor? Yes, I'm the conductor of this train of life. The train of life? The train of life. Why do we call it the train of life? Because it's a train that supplies the entire population from a distance of 569 kilometers to Nouadhibou. I see that there's not only water, but there's also food, passengers, and mostly animals. You're carrying a lot of things. This is for the mobile vendors. These are merchants who have been around for years. They have their reserved wagons, where they can put their goods, also for supplying people um, along the way. Do you like the job of being a life conductor? Yes, I like it a lot. I love it because it did a lot to me. How do you feel? I feel I can feel humanity. I sense consideration and I feel responsible. I sense knowledge, a general knowledge all the way through. Well, if you're needed, I won't delay you. Uh, can I come up? Uh, here or there? You can be up here with the people. Take a seat. All right. Okay. Go find a space and sit with people. But I don't have any tickets, is that okay? It's free. Ah, all right. So I'll see you at the next water stop. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. God willing. Salam alaikum. The train of life is slowing down, which is a good sign. We are apparently at a supply point, a small village that's inhabited. I can see heads popping out. I think Musa, the conductor, is eagerly awaited. We can get a lot of things here. Yes, this is bread. Bread? Yes, it's ah, bread. Bread crumbs for, for breading food. All right. Yes. How about this? It's a des. Oh, lentils. <coughs> It's not over. They're still selling while the train is running. Oh, 
That was the change. Instead of giving back a few bucks, our merchant friend has thrown a can of sardines. That makes it even. Oh, a customer forgot to pay. Ah, desert men are honest. In this village, the shepherds aren't sure if they'll sell their goats. One of them found a taker. Hello. Hello. How are you? How's business today? Is it working or not? A little. A little. Not much? No, it's not much. But this long road, it's not much. And is it better than, say, having a fixed shop? The ones who run the big businesses are people with a lot of money. I don't have enough money. That's why I'm taking the train, so I don't have to pay for transportation. It's a good compromise. You come here every week for the train? Yes, we're coming because it's like a marketplace. This train is very important for the village. It brings us food. And everything we need. It's the final stretch. The ore train takes us to the port of Nuadibu, on the shores of the ocean, and to the end of the long peninsula. My friend Bula went ahead to see his family again. Final stop for passengers and our precious iron cargo. Bula! Oh, hello, Olivier. Good to see you again. Are you okay? Did you have a good I trip? Had a great trip. Tiring, Happy to hear that. And full nice. of encounters. Glad to see you again here well, in Noadibu. So you're welcome. I'm thrilled. We're good. in your country and your yes, city. Yes, in my Noadibu. city. In Noadibu, the iron is loaded on board mainly Chinese ships. Nearly 80% of this very pure iron ore is purchased by China for the trifle of $100 a ton. Between the bay and the ocean, Bula is showing me around Nuadibu, a port that has become the economic lungs of Mauritania. Even its fisheries have kept the charm of ancient times. Wow, it's very busy in this port. Yes, this is the biggest port of artisanal fisheries in Mauritania. As you can see, this port creates a lot of work for people, not only Mauritanians, but also other nationalities who come here to work. This means that Mauritania is a country which is open to everyone. Hello. Hello. You're a fishing boss here. Yes, I am. Okay, so fishing. Here in Mauritania has been great activity, one of the most important yes. for the country's wealth. You're right. Is that still the case? Of course. This activity is one of the most lucrative in Mauritania. After the iron activity, fishing comes in second place. 
It generates funding tremendously and creates much needed jobs. Our Mauritanian coast still as fish abundant as ever. Of course, the Mauritanian coast, you often hear, as I do, is one of the richest sources of fish in the world. Does that mean that fish is still a traditional staple dish for Mauritanians? Unfortunately, there is no specific boat to supply the local market. There are boats which do it, but they're not so well equipped to supply the market here. I know you have to go, so I won't delay you anymore, Musa. So I wish you a good day and great fishing. Thank you, Olivier. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Goodbye. Good fishing. Bye. In Mauritania, fisheries agreements are very favorable to certain countries, including China and Russia, at the expense of local buyers. Fish, a treasure that's also going back to the open sea. There we go. The journey ends up here on the white headland by the ocean, a long haul through the dreamlike sceneries of dunes, but also a desert that is, after all, very varied. I've been especially moved by the generosity and hospitality of the Mauritanians I've been able to meet, and by Bula, my guide, but also Maloum, the teacher, Ali, the student, and many others. Mauritania is a gem that hasn't finished revealing all its secrets. Anyway, it's an endearing country that opens its door for you. See you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.